All right, so chi-squared test. We're testing for independence. Do the stats of one category depend on the other, or are they independent? Do they not rely on each other? So we're going to go through this example together. So make sure you have this on your screen and just follow along with me. So example says, Manuel conducts a survey on a random sample of 751 people to see which television program type they watch most from the following uh, categories, drama, comedy, film, and news. So from, the, from Manuel's uh, experiment or data collection, this is what he got, all these numbers, good numbers. And to do a chi-squared test, we need to know the level of significance. He's going to test at a 5% level. This is always given to you, the level of significance. So that's not something you have to find out. It's always going to be given. So we know our significance level is 5 and he wants to see if the program type is independent of gender. Does it not, does it not matter? The first thing we need to do is we need to draw a better table. So this huge table we have here won't work because we have technically males and females in two different categories. So we want to combine them. So on your table with me, you're going to you're just going to follow me. So one is going to be males and the other one is going to be females. And we're just going to group them together. So males for drama would be this plus that, 58. So 58 dudes like drama. And then for comedy, we have 119 dudes. Film, 157 dudes. And then for news, we have these two, add them together, and you get 52. And then you see we have a totals column here. We just add them all up. 386. Now I've got to add up all the women's. So again, we have to add up this whole row to get a total. But yeah, that, that'll be 365. And then now we have to do the totals for the columns. So the total would be 144 to 217. That one would be 50, 277, 13. And then here, this is the most important one. This is the total of everything. So you'll know you've done this one right if when you add, if you add these two and you add these, you get the same exact thing. So when you add them all up, they actually tell you the total. It's right here. You should get 751. Now we're going to try and perform this chi square test to see, okay, is gender independent of the type of television program you like? First, we've got to start with something called a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. What this means is null is saying that they are independent. So your hypothesis would look something like this. You would say gender is independent or independent from, I should say, TV programs. I'll put TVP, TV programs. The alternative hypothesis is the exact opposite. You're saying they are dependent. So the alternative and your hypothesis would just be, oh, gender is not independent from TV program type. So after we come up with our hypothesis, the first thing we need to do is calculate expected values. What that means is if someone were to do this experiment again, like on average, you know, what would be the expected values for each of those cells, each of those columns? So here we have some values filled in already. Well, the way we get these values is we do, we take our totals. We'll say it's the row total times column total divided by table total. So for example, I'll look at this one first that they gave us. They give us 74 here. So what they're saying is if I go to my row total, which should be 386 right here, multiplied by the column, column total, which is 144 right here, divided by the table total, I should get somewhere close to 74. And we're going to try that. So 386 times 144 gives me that. Divide by 751. And look at that. I get 74.0133 something. Point nasty. Well, you always round up to the nearest or round to the nearest whole number for this. So that's how we got 74 because we're talking about people. So part D, they say, show that the expected frequency for the number of females who like comedy as their most watched program is 105. All we're doing is we're showing how they got this number right here. The row total is this, 365. And then the column total would be 217. 
So I'll do 365 times 217, divide by everything, 751. And see, I get 105. Now, here's the thing. You only have to do that, that whole, this formula right here, if they ask you for it. Most of the time, they want you to just use your calculator. So to put this in the calculator, you have to go to second and then matrix right here. And then we're gonna go to edit. And you're gonna put your observed values, this one, into your table. And you're only gonna put in this part. Never put in your totals, only put in this part. So I'll edit that. And so this part would be two rows, four columns. So two by four. And I type those in. This is 58, 119. The next thing we have to do is we're going to go to stat and test. We're going to go down until we see a little x squared. That means chi squared. You want to go to the one that says chi squared test. The first one, you see? Go to that one. So we're going to click chi squared test. Observe, that's what we put in an A. Expected B, they're going to fill that in for you. And we're going to do calculate. So here, this is giving us three very important values. We're going to come back to this in a second. But the one thing, the one thing we want to know is our expected values for, to fill out this table. So if you go back to your matrix, second matrix, edit, and then we can see everything in B. So that one's 112. The one next to it is 142, 142. And then the last one is 55, 55. And that's where I filled in this table from. So now we go down to part E. It says state the number of degrees of freedom. What they mean is your choice. What is your freedom of choice here? And the best way to explain it to you is I have an example right here. I have a bunch of hats, a bunch of awesome hats. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hats, seven beautiful hats. The degrees of freedom. What are my degrees of freedom of picking these hats? Well, let's see. Let's say I pick this hat first. Once I pick that hat, how many more hats can I pick? Oh, I can pick one, two, three, four, five, six more hats. If I pick that hat, how many more can I pick? One, two, three, four, five. So those are my degrees of freedom. I have freedom to choose. But once I keep going down here and here, so I've picked five hats, I have two choices now. But once I pick that six hat, I no longer have a choice. So if I'm picking out seven hats, I have six degrees of freedom. Because once I pick that six hat, I don't have a choice. That's where we get this from. So we're gonna say, okay, what, what are my degrees of freedom from choosing male and female here? It should just be one. Because once I pick a male, I, can, I have to pick a female or the other way around, right? So I'll say for picking gender, my degree of freedom is two minus one. I'll put a G here for gender. Now, when I say picking a TV program type, there's four here, but I technically have three degrees of freedom because once I pick third, the three of them, I have to pick the last one. To get your degrees of freedom, you multiply the two together. So this one would be a total of two minus one is one, three, four minus one is three, three. This is my degrees of freedom. So if they ever ask you to find the degrees of freedom by hand, you do that. But if you notice, I still have my calculator on the screen. You see DF there? That means degrees of freedom. Calculator does it for you too. So my calculator, it tells me it's three. Now this part says, state the equal value for a Manuel's test. To do that, we need to know the significance level and we need to know, and the degrees of freedom, that's what we need. So our significance level, they gave that to us in the beginning. That was right here, 5%. Change that to a decimal, we have 0.05. Degrees of freedom was three. On our table, so they'll actually rarely ever make you do this. Usually they give you the critical value, but just in case. So I see 0 0.05 right here, and then degrees of freedom here. Where they line up, that's my critical level. 
So it'd be 7.815. And then the calculator gave us the information for this. The chi squared statistic is 12. Point, let's do three sig figs, 12.6. And our p value, that's our probability, is 0 0.005. Six, I'll say five, six, I'll go another one, five, six, nine, nine. There you go. Now, we're, we use these two values to figure out what our chi squared test is telling us. Are these two independent or are they dependent? Is gender independent from TV program or is it dependent? The way we do that is there's two ways. If our chi squared value is less then the critical value, this is our critical value. Then we say, yes, they are independent. So we look here, is this, is 12.6 less than that? No, false. This is showing dependence. The second way to, to find out is if the P value is greater than the significant value, then we say, yes, they are independent. So, okay, what did we get here? So the p-value is, as you can see, it's, it's much less than the significance level here. So again, this is also saying false. Either way is a correct way of determining whether they're independent or not. So normally what they prefer you saying is this, saying not independent or not independent, but it means the same thing. 